Hey, this is Mark with Magnolia Oaks Woodshop. I appreciate you checking out this video. And today we're going to be talking about the Xtool Creative Space. And so uh, if we look at the settings right here, uh, this is the current version as of today, 1.4.11. But uh, basically anything that we go through will be very similar uh, for future versions. But um, if you've per recently purchased uh, the P2 or um, you know the D1 Pro or any other uh, Xtool product, you'll know that this Creative Space has come a long way from when it was Lightbox. And so um, many of us have been using Lightburn over the years, but the P2 currently uh, lacks a few features when using Lightburn. And so I've been using Creative Space extensively over the last couple of months with my new P2. I just wanted to give you a brief background on how to do everything that you want to do inside of the Creative Space. So first of all, you'll see that we have a blank slate right here when you log in. And uh, I want to show you just some of the features. So first of all, uh, you'll want to know how to import images. So you'll get your image, bring it in just like this. Uh, it'll ask you if it's too large, do you want to scale it? Let's just say display in the original size. And then the first thing that we always want to do uh, is trace it just like in Lightburn. So we'll do trace. Their trace is pretty good. We'll save it. And um, then we'll go down here and try to fit on screen. Let's take it down a little bit so we can see it. It's over here on the side. So we'll move it over here, the trace, and then our image right here we can delete, just like in Lightburn. So now we'll go back in and we'll fit on screen. And, sorry about that. Now we'll resize this image. So I have mine set up in inches. Uh, so we'll do the width as five, and we'll do the height as five. Let's actually make it smaller than that. Let's do two and two. And again, just like in Lightburn, uh, you can click right here and it won't uh, make proportionate dimensions. So uh, you can make this wherever you want, but we'll do two and two. And then we'll pull that right here. So we've got our image and we've got an outline. Um, very basic controls as far as rotate. You know, if you want to rotate it 50 degrees or whatever, you can do that there. You can also set the position right here. I, I don't use that very often. Um, over here on the right side is, uh, I actually have a P2. I was opening a project just to uh, check it out earlier and it put that there, but I have an Xtool P2. And you can see some of the object settings. This is basically where you'll say what you want to happen to that particular layer. And so you can either score, engrave, or cut. And you can set the type of material that you're going to uh, connect on. Um, first of all, uh, if you have this connected, I'm not connected at the current time, but you can do refresh screen and it will show you a real time view of uh, your bed and the material so you can place it on there. That is by far my favorite feature of this P2. I had a D1 and so currently have a D1 and not being able to see exactly where that piece will uh, go onto the material uh, was really problematic because all you could do is basically just uh, frame it until you have it pretty close but having that camera is just incredible. So over here you'll see that there'll be different settings for each one score versus engrave versus cut. You've probably, if you got a P2, you've probably been doing this for a while so you'll know the cut, you're going to have to have a lot of power, slow speed, engrave, uh, you know, kind of in the middle ground. And then scores could be your fastest. And the best thing is they have, when you set up your, your material, so uh, if I go back and I set up a uh, use, uh, user-defined material, actually it'll pre-populate and it will say three millimeter basswood or whatever. I'm not connected to the machine currently, cause, so it won't show that, but it'll say three millimeter basswood, for example. You hit start, or, and it will allow you to... Uh, adjust your layer settings based on what's called a reference. So it has the best uh, settings saved in that setting and so you can just choose that reference and try that as your first cut and then if that doesn't get exactly what you're looking for then you can go back and tweak these a little bit and it will revert to same manual settings. So anyway here is the image and we made that a vector so that's very important. You can also um, similarly to Lightburn um, you can choose to ignore a particular layer right here um, or output. So that's good when you have other things off the screen that you don't want actually printed. You can put those on a layer that uh, you can ignore. So next we'll go into insert these very basic line rectangle circle. I'm going to put in a rectangle and again you can set this to be whatever size that you want manually and right now it's locked so it won't let me do anything different from what's proportional. So let's unlock it and let's do one by one. And then if we want to uh, resize it, obviously we can. 
But if we want to do an array, we'll just do grid array, uh, two columns, three columns, three rows, four rows, and you can see right there. So that's very similar to, to uh, Lightbird. <clears throat> also, it has the ability to do a circular array right here. So that's different. I don't, I don't use that particular feature. Uh, so uh, it may be helpful to you though. And then also we can do a material test. So before we have to have a material card, you can do that right here in uh, the P2 creative space. So this is the X tool creative space rather. Uh, and you'll just basically draw your square and then you'll do array material test. And then you can go minimum um, 10 power and minimum 10 speed. And then you can go up and do all your settings here, your max speed, your max power, that kind of thing. And then when you do that, um, it will create this little test card right here that you can use to um, you know, do a test on your material. So that's extremely handy. And uh, one thing that confused me initially when I was doing it was that um, it didn't allow you to, um, you, in, in Lightburn, each of these would be a different layer. Uh, in Creative Space, you can see right here, you have to click, if you do ungroup, and you go here, this is set to 10 and 10. If you click here, it's set to 10 and 1,008. So uh, it is actually setting different parameters for each of these but it's not immediately visible because it's all on one layer. So you can have one layer with multiple settings. So multiple objects on that layer can have different power and speed settings. So that was something you need to get my head around, but uh, very cool. And you can do, run this test right there. Uh, next, shapes. They do have a very uh, rudimentary uh, you know, grouping of shapes, but it is there. Uh, you don't have to go out and download it. It's basically uh, icons for the most part. So you can just click on those and that beautiful, beautiful thing is they come in as vectors so you don't have to worry about uh, tracing them. So that's there. And if I wanted to put this on a different layer, all I would do is go move to, like for example this one, and then when I click on it, I can uh, add in all my specific power settings for that particular item. So that's really nice. A little bit different layout than like burn, but uh, very similar. And then text, of course, uh, you click right there and you can resize it. You don't have to, um, you know, uh, vectorize or make it a path like in uh, Inkscape or Illustrator. The one thing that I will say is um, I would like to be able to actually edit it right here natively in this box, but you can see if I click on it, I have to go over here to actually update it. It's not a big deal, but it would be nice if you could do that right there. So I'm sure that will be coming in any time. So I'll change the size, the typeface, all that kind of stuff. Very basic stuff. Okay. Next, we want to get into the vector. So you can basically draw a vector image or a polygon, however you like, and then stop it, and it will draw that particular shape. I don't know what shape that is. I haven't really found a use for that, but uh, it is there if you want it. Um, you can do, uh, let's see, right here is uh, art where you can do some it's AI art that you can use uh, in your projects and so I haven't really played around with that a whole lot um, but it is very interesting there looking at that uh, down here is your select so that will allow you to select an object a hand will allow you to move uh, the workspace around so that's that and then over here if we look up here at the top we'll just go back to select and select that you do have a reflect function so you can reflect horizontally you can make a copy and then reflect that again if you need to. Uh, there's also, of course, arranging of the layers. So you can uh, arrange you know, one object in front of another. Uh, there is group, ungroup, uh, align, all those kind of things. So um, basically that's, that's the deal. So you'll, you'll come up with your design right here. You know, you'll import your SVGs or your PNGs. You'll put the items on uh, different layers as you need them, wherever it's cut, engrave, or um, score. And then if you need different levels of power and speed on each of those layers, you can do that by clicking the ungrouped items. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. Um, before we go, I'll just show you up here this uh, announcement community. Announcement is, uh, you know, basically an announcements page. Community is, uh, you know, all these different things, home, how to tri tips and tricks. Projects right here, this is really nice because it has, uh, 
you know, different projects that you can automatically load into your, your software and do those. And so what you would do is you'll just choose your machine. So this is a P2 that I have, and it shows you all the P2 ones. And then you could do level two for in between, and then we could do laser engraved, for example. Um, so you can see some of these. And then if you want to do them, you just open them, and it downloads the project and opens it in here. So that's really slick. Um, and then also support takes you to the support portal and shop allows you to uh, go to their site and buy materials and, and different machines and things like that. So all in all, it's a great tool, uh, great space, and uh, I would highly recommend it. Uh, it'll be great when they get uh, a little more support for, uh, for Lightburn because that's what I'm more comfortable with. But at the current state, uh, things like the, um, the slider rail where you can process material, uh, longer material through uh, the P2, that can only be done in x tool Creative Space and also the curved uh, engraving, which is uh, an awesome new feature. So um, if you have any questions, just let me know. I appreciate every, everything that uh, you leave it down in the comments. I want to learn as well. Again, this is Mark with uh, Magnolia Oaks Woodshop, and I'll see you on the next one.